Hi guys. So this activity actually was very fun for me. Me and my eight-year-old walked together and created our board game based on a fun digital math game that I found online. And I'm going to share that game with you in a moment. The great thing about the original is it really covers a wide range of abilities and ages and developmental levels. And it's even easier to differentiate with the board game as you'll see in a moment. Let's take a look at the original. This is zombie math. Zombie math is really cool. It's basically a math version of Plants vs. Zombies, which everybody likes, including my son. Um, we decided to name our board game Math vs. Zombies because we think that's a little bit more cool. But I'm going to show you how to play the original and then we'll introduce my version. As you can see, we have zombies. You can choose here in the menu settings, math, skills, or shop. We're going to go ahead and start the game. So you can continue a game, do a new game, and there's a different options here. And look at all of the different skills and the levels you can do um, from pre-k to eight. We're going to go ahead and choose third. And these are just the third grade skills you can work on. We're going to do estimation for today. So the point of the game here is to get all of the zombies before you run out of brains. If you get one wrong, then you lose brains, um, but there's not really a timer. You just have as long as it takes for the zombies to get down to where you're standing, um, hypothetically. And then when you run out of brains, you are dead. Or if you run out of zombies first and defeat them all, you win. And then you can pause, restart. You can also change your skill level. This is preschool. And you really can meet the needs of such a wide variety. And there it is, zombie math. So now let's take a look at our version, which we had a lot of fun creating. So we decided to call it Math vs. Zombies because it's just a little bit more fun. So of course, in Math vs. Zombies, you have to have zombies. I made three zombies. You can do however many zombies you want. And it's really cool because players can be zombies or they can be the former. Or they can be both if, if you want to make it a more competitive version. I'm going to show you the non-competitive version, but, um, but you could definitely change it up. And then you have to have your settings. It's difficult to show um, because of the size, but zombies start back here at the farm. And the player or players who are playing would be down here at this end of the board. So the original non-competitive version involves putting a, however many zombies you choose down here by the bomb. And the player or players who are working as a team stand at the far end. And uh, as they answer math questions, if they get a question correct, then the zombie gets knocked back. Or, or in this case, if they're all the way back, knocked off the board and is out. If they get the problem incorrect, a zombie moves forward one space. For every correct answer, it gets set back or knocked out. Incorrect answer, it moves forward. Now the game is over when all the zombies are out or all the zombies have made it in. Now that would be more challenging. You could definitely change it up for challenging level um, and say once one zombie gets into the, the farmhouse over here, then game's over. Um, or you could say, you know, there's only one zombie, it's off or on. Now, the more competitive version that we thought of was um, having some students be zombies who are, who are answering questions in order to move forward or get knocked back. And then someone being someone or more than one being the farmer at the end who is answering questions to knock the zombies back. Okay. And it's a pretty big board, 14 spots. So you could be, have quite the challenging game going. Um, for a while, or you could um, make the questions a little bit easier and make it a little quicker. You can start the zombies in the middle of the board so that they have spaces to move back and move forward. Okay, so that's the setup and the pieces. Um, one option that we did not complete yet, but is an option is having pieces for the formals as well. They could be moving forward or moving back as well, fighting off the zombies. And, and the great thing is you can add as many players as you feel needed. It can also be played as a single player game where you're the former at the end and the zombie or zombies at the end 
moving up and down as you get questions correct or incorrect. For all version of the game, we chose third grade math. What I did is I created a set of task cards for this game. Now you could do this for any topic, any subject area that you create task cards for. We're doing math, of course. And so I have three color-coded sections of math cards. We have fractions, which are red, rounding, which is pink, but it's hard to tell, and multiplying and dividing, which are yellow. Let's go with the original version of one or more players all being the farmers and um, trying to stop the zombies. And so what they would do is they would pick a topic, like fractions, for example, and they would read the question. This one says, in a basket, there are five apples, two kiwis, eight eggplants, and three bananas. What fraction of these food items are vegetables? Now they have paper, so you can see their work. They can use any tools that you would usually allow them on these problems in the classroom. Um, and they have a task card answer sheet to mark down the question number and the answer. You can number these as you would like. Um, and it has the, the answer on the back. So you would put them face up. And so they pick a card or someone picks a card and reads it to them. And then they check the answer on the back. And this way they're recording their task card answers on the task card sheet as they would um, doing any task cards, which are adding in the engaging fun fighting zombies version, um, which makes it a bit more engaging. Now, like I said before, the amazing thing about this game is that you could really do anything. You could change the cards out and put kindergarten level math task cards or, um, or questions. You could use this with, with a teacher in a small group. You could do high school level questions. Really with the board and the pieces, it can be switched out. You can do English language arts or writing questions, grammar questions, anything that has task cards. We created our own task cards, but you could also, um, I printed off these questions from um, a source. And so you could use these in many different ways. Another option is adding in a competitive or a more challenging piece, which is like adding a timer, um, like the blitz or the challenging version on the original. I really like these multiply and divide questions. So it's multiply or divide. For example, there are 12 boxes of ice cream in the freezer. If four ice creams are in each box, how many are there altogether? One level of challenge that I decided to add that kind of gets their mathematical thinking and it reminds me of cognitive guided instruction. So these multiply or divide questions are two part questions. They have to tell whether or not the problem is a multiply problem or dividing problem. Um, and so that would be one move or one point. And then solving the problem would be another. So if they can say, you know, this is a multiplying problem, then if they are able to solve it, then they get to knock it back too. And you can really create your own rules and, and add in all different kinds of challenges. You can, um, students could play together with their own task cards at different levels as well. Um, it really is super creative and it was a lot of fun to, to play. I hope you guys enjoyed my little preview. That is Math vs. Zombies. <laughs>